And so Logan, and tonight I will be performing for you guys two scenes. Uh, the first scene I will be playing as Baron from the scene um, Chemistry of Change. And the second scene I will be Tim from Wild Coast Hygiene. Enjoy. My mother, she tells people that I have mustard gas poisoning, but it's not true. She's just disappointed in how I turned out. She's got these, these archetypes. My brother Farley's a malingerer. My sister Corliss is her good right hand. Shep is sensitive and I'm a good looking drunk. This is how she keeps you from seeing the truth. She looks at me and she sees this archetype, but in reality, I, I pass in this world as a monster. <coughs> or should I say minister? Yes, minister. And my ministry is lost women. Huh. Very lost, very intelligent women will find me. Much like a virgin finds a volcano. And we'll begin this conversation that takes us straight to hell. Home to hell, where we can talk frankly about our lives, talk endlessly about the ways that we've mistaken and how we've been disappointed. You see, I've cultivated this way of listening to them talk. Perfect amount of fascination and attachment. But in reality, I'm not listening to them speak. I'm, I'm waiting for my turn to speak. And when I do, I, I don't stop. You see, I can make a sentence run on for two to three hours just because I'm trying to say this to you. do interrupt me, which I know they will because they're drunk, I become enraged. And of course, that's the point, <clears throat> because I need to become a monster. When I become this, this monster, I believe that whoever I'm with represents the chaos in my life, and if I can somehow change them, fix them, then I can somehow Fix myself, I can become healed. They see it as some prelude to intimacy, whereas in reality, it's a trap. I, I draw them in and I, I pain them in ways that I feel if I'd be pained. You wouldn't know what a blessing, what a comfort it is to pass in this world as a monster. And scene. state that all allegations held against Wild Horse Cabin are true. But let the record also state that th those said allegations that you wish to hold us accountable for were not detrimental to our or others' camp experiences here at the Sunnyvale Camp. <clears throat> Did we sneak out of the messy hall? 
3 in the morning to roll around naked in the mud pit? Yes. <laughs> and were our clothes subsequently misplaced while we ran around the screen, uh, ran around in the field screaming, putting on my pee pee? Yes. But was this, and I quote, a homosexual act of corruption? No. I I see it more as a homosocial act of camaraderie <laughs> that, that will benefit all members involved. Did we replace Desperado Cabinet's toothpaste with Icy Hot? Uh, yeah. And were there screams, blood-curdling screams that range from Desperado Cabin in a course of terror? Well, naturally. But was this a attempt to poison fellow campers? By no means. By no means. I see it more as a um a way to promote fellowship between camps. And the way I see it now, Desperado and Wild Horse have a very um healthy rivalry that I believe all young men should have. As for the Leslie Hill incident, did we purposefully pee our swimming suits in front of Leslie and her friends on seven dis distinct occasions? Yeah. And was this encounter kind of awkward and overall gross for her? Probably. But was this some devious attempt to urinate on young women? I think not. I think of it more as a, a new frontier for uniting men and women in equal rights. <laughs> to be honest though, Leslie Hill's kind of snob and all of her friends are too, but no, please, wait, before you say anything, please consider how we at Law Horse Cabin have enhanced all of your experiences here for the better. Before you send us home back to our boring lives, please consider it. Putting on my pee.